I mean, seriously, it will make for a great uh, end of year thing. Sophie's not here, so I've got to embarrass her with all the mistakes she's made over the years. Yeah, and, and just record it, like, straight onto it. Just, like, have a podcast called Sophie's Corrections. So, shall, I, shall we get started? Of course. I'll let you start this time, because I started the last time. This is the As Yet Undecided podcast, in which we cannot decide on anything. With the convicted hosts, Mike and Sophie. So it's, 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 so it's technically going to be Mike and Sophie, rather than Sophie or, and Mike. Well, it's always been that way. I know. Should we start the intro <laughs> But no, 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 because because this is a very good conversation starter. Oh, really? Because I know a lot of podcasts that are actually named, and they be really sarcastic about how they want to switch names. Oh yeah. Like the John and Hank Green podcast, mm-hmm. when they've actually made a bet mm-hmm. that if humans got to Mars by 2028 mm. it would be changed from Hank and John to John and Hank <laughs> oh really yeah should we do some of it M- maybe the the public may be able to suggest some sort of bet mm. how, how was your first week back uh do you, th- do you think we should do my corrections first no we'll, we'll talk about each other's day first uh, it's been a really tiring week. I mean, I had to buy textbooks. I had an 8 a.m. class today, so I'm a little bit snoozed out. You're a little bit snoozed out. Mm. All right. On to Sophie's Corrections. Last week I said that you're allowed to have um, pocket knives on domestic flights around the U.S. Turns out, not quite true. The TSA were considering that, and they even drafted the legislation for us in 2013, and they were about to sign it into law. Early, early May that year. However, uh, there was a huge backlash, and I think what stopped it, was, or scuttled it, was another terrorist attack. I think it might have been... I think it was the Boston bombing, but please don't quote me on that. Anyway, fact of the matter is, please do not take your knives on board. Any, and then I just sue me for saying that you're allowed to take your knives on board and you end up being in jail because you end up doing so. You can't, Okay. This is a correction to say that I absolve myself of any responsibility of it. Yeah, so if someone gets arrested for plastic knives, by all means, ring Sophie and she will not bail you out. I would never <laughs> bail you guys out. Please, uh, please, honestly, this is not, this is a banter podcast, not a factual podcast. I mean, you guys might be able to sue no such thing as the fish podcasters, you know, the QILs, but not us, please. So, are you, you going to ask about my week? Yes, I was about to get to that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, how's your, how was your week, Mike? Uh, because we talked about it on the podcast last week, because we are changing the days in which we record mm-hmm. to do to our schedules. Yeah. All right? Um, and I talked about how I had surgery the day before. Yeah. We are recording this on Friday, and I had surgery last Thursday. Um, I just had an appointment today with the specialist, and it's healthier than it's ever been. So the surgery technically worked. Um, however... As we hope all surgeries would. But we, oh, of course, but, but you know me, I always think worst case scenario on these yeah. sort of things. Um, and I originally was going to have a medication decrease... Mm. Like, you know, antibacterial creams and blah, 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 blah. But then I get a call while I was in class today saying, oh, uh, you know that decreasing medication? Uh, Ignore that. And we'll see you next week. Redact that statement. Yes. (laughs) Yes. It's like, missed calls from this foreign number. I'm like, "Uh uh-oh, is this Bay Corp or is this the hospital? (laughs) (laughs) But it's right. Uh, Yeah. And you brought up textbooks before, and how expensive are your law books? Okay. Oh, yes. Um, Not just law books. I actually do law and business. And the total cost of my textbooks thus far for semester one, $482 in total. So is that for how many papers? Four papers. So you have all of the textbooks? 
for four papers, yes. Actually, I only bought textbooks for three papers because economic principles one, and I mean, economic principles two share the same textbook as, as economic principles one, which I did last year. So for three papers, I spent $482 and okay. and change. Now, the funny part about me um, doing social sciences and psychology, mm-hmm. um, I have not paid a dime. Well, they are considered less wealthy um, subjects, and you're not expected to make that much money off it afterwards. So that's why you probably, that's why they probably um, became a little bit more lenient about the textbook situation. Um, there is, I'm, I'm sorry to say, to um, call out a few people, including myself. There is on Google a PDF of the textbook, Ooh. <laughs> or you can pay eighty five dollars. For the actual version. <laughs> ah, sneaky, sneaky. Mm. And for one of the books that I have for democratic participation that I'll be reading this weekend, um, it's a ACSM file. Oh yes, so you have to have Adobe Reader on it. So how did you break it then? No, because 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 if you don't know uh, ACSM files, you get to rent it. For a certain period, and then you have to reinstate it. Mm-hmm. You can reinstate it as, lo- as many times as you like, as long as you do it, which is fine. But the bad part about what I'm doing, because of my eye issue, I have it. I need it to have it read to me. So I use text-to-speech software to get it back to me. So what ACSM does, and I'm thankful for this is that you can copy and paste text. Ooh, yes. So I copy a chapter at a time. Yeah. So like I've read chapter one, we've got chapter two this week. So I just upload it and then just drag, copy, and then text. Rinse, repeat. Yes. So so, which got me wondering, because it's not just those cost of the textbooks that's the problem, it's the weight. For example, Law of Torts, it's about a key. I, <laughs> law of Torts, it's thicker than Les Mis, and once I managed to stop a door with it. Like, I got the textbook right beside the door, the wind was blowing, and I was about to slam until it caught onto the textbook and it stopped dead right there. Now, you need to explain to me, because I, 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 am, not a law, I am not a law person, mm-hmm. what is a tort? A tort is basically, um, we, so when you have two um, civilians, and one civilian does something bad to the other civilian, then the civilian can actually go to court say that, oh, this, this guy basically did something really bad to me, um, I, want, I want to get compensation. Okay. And that's, a, and that's basically a tort, it's a, law, it's a law saying you're not allowed to do this to your fellow civvies. Okay. Yeah. So, so back on to the topic at hand. Mm, yeah. I, I'm sorry, this is a really bad explanation because I just had my first lesson on it, which means I have no idea what really, how to explain what a, what a tort is. Yeah. So, th- this brings up a pr- pretty essential debate. Do you, w- w- with a textbook, mm. do you use it both at home and at uni? Oh, uh, well, I try to. And are there high demand copies or not? Well, the thing is with high demand copies, they are high demand. So theoretically, you can get one in practice. The students have got them before you. Okay. Murphy's Law. Yeah. What, what I'm getting at, you know where I'm getting with this. Is it possible to leave the text at home or do you need it for the lecture? Sometimes you do need it for the lecture. Yes, Murphy's Law again, Especially right? with the workshops. You often need your textbook for your workshops. So Murphy's Law, right? Yeah, Murphy's Law, yeah. Um, would it be beneficial if it was on an e-format? Oh, certainly. Um, well, as I said, my um, textbook for the tour is basically stopped the door, so I would love it if there was an e-book version, but there isn't. Mm. And then you know what could be done. What? You can scan it all, but that will take literally days. It will take longer than my paper. Yeah. Yeah. Not worth it. 
Yeah, especially with how light those pages are. Mm. The the um, light will go through and you'll get two or three pages scanned instead of one page. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I feel very fortunate for myself and very unfortunate for you. I know, I know. Luckily, most of the textbooks I got this year were e-textbooks. That, that was one of the re- New Year's resolutions. I would get as many e-textbooks as possible and basically um, ab- ignore the physical ones. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is that I have both the PDF and the hard copy. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, because because of my last name, that I, I am a Maori student. Maori, yeah. Maori student. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to gift my text to the Maori office. Nice. So therefore, it'll be there for future students, but also there for myself. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. Without giving it to the library for high demand. Yeah. See? You see where I'm going with this? Uh-huh. So yeah. only you can use it. Yeah. And what I would suggest of you, you give it to the Chinese office. Yeah, well, except I don't, I haven't had any much contact with the Chinese office because I'm not really that Chinese. Yeah. I don't consider myself Chinese enough to actually be there. And what, what the last textbook that I'm trying to get at the moment, um, th- there is one in high demand, which is fine. Good. Um, but it's from 1998. That's a little bit younger than me. Yeah, just by a year, by yeah. by a year, just a little bit, and it's about self psychology. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're talking as if ebooks are the best things ever. But surely, well, surely there's got to be some sort of advantages with uh, physical textbooks. Yes, because, uh, yeah, I have I've no doubt that there is. Yeah, but the part that annoys me about physical textbooks is the additions. Debacle. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you need to get the 5th edition. No, the 4th edition. No, the 7th edition. I have no idea of which chapters to go read now. And it's pretty much the same content. Yeah. And they I'm, just rearrange it. They add stuff to it. They amend it. Yeah, but in actual fact, the amending stuff doesn't really mean anything. Oh, I know, right? So it's like, yeah, there's a good YouTube clip about a person explaining this. Mm. And I and since Sophie is in charge of social media, yeah. we will link that down in the show notes. No, I can't link it in the show notes. Um, our sound account doesn't support links. Yeah, but yeah, but we but we will provide some sort of information for you to find it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so 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 well, textbooks are hellishly expensive, of course, and we can. But think, thankfully, in New Zealand, we have something called student loans provided by the government. The thing is, uh, we have to pay it back sooner or later when we become um, wealthy-ish. Well, more, wealthy-ish. Well, more. Yeah. Well, you do have to have you do have to earn some sort of income before you can start paying student loans. But the income is kind of low, and um, I think it's more about me than you, Mike, because I think that is my job in the. After leave uni, we'll be a bit more bounteous than your job. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, um, student loans are more of a problem for me than you. Um, everything's more expensive for me. Yeah. And I have to, and it's more like, bigger, higher chance I have to pay it back later. Should it, do you think that student loans should be privatised? Like all other government services? Now, well, that's an interesting debate. And firstly, I want to say that no matter how no matter how much you earn mm. you are still paid the same percentage back man um, that you you mandatory have to pay the same amount back after you pass the income threshold yes which is 21,000 per year i believe oh yes and after that you it is 12% on top of your tax and whatnot but you also get a tax credit. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you pay less tax overall, mm. but you also pay more tax overall as well. Yeah, less tax overall, but you do pay more to government. Yeah. So, like, in, like for instance, your 
uh, PAYE mm. will go from 30 to 28. Yeah. But because of the 12%, you're paying 40%. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> so, yeah, you see what I mean? Yeah. And because I did this for the six years between my first degree and this degree. Yeah. So I, I kind of know what you mean. But at the bigger issue at hand about public versus private. Yeah. Um, in my experiences with public and private, um, you basically pay a lot more money, but you get a shittier service. That's what I've noticed. With private. With private. Wow. It's, it seems to be um, slightly different when it comes to healthcare, because private healthcare in New Zealand... It's much, much better than public health care because you have a shorter waiting list and you have um, more advanced medications. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, with me and my contacts, it was more of, I wish I had more information from the private. Wow. Because it was my first lot of contacts and I had no idea what was going on. Why didn't they give you that much information? I don't know. They probably assumed a lot of things of me. Mm. Which was unfortunate. Yeah. So, for you, private health care was a bit of a disaster? Yeah. bit of a di- Okay. So, you... Uh, all right. So, where, where's here? I mean, I'm... As a posh person, I've had a... I've heard different stories. Yeah. About private health care. Especially if you had to go to Ascot Hospital over in Green Lane. And... Especially with what's been going on with Circo, with the prisons at the moment. Oh, yes. I mean, yes. Circo was an absolute disaster. I mean, uh, let's list off the number of stuff they did wrong. You go. You go. You go first. Yeah, but the problem is that um, this podcast is half an hour. (laughs) And there there seems to be a lot of confusion Uh. that Circo lost every contract. Yeah. That is not the case. They only lost the, the one contract to Mount Eden. Yeah. They still have the one in Woody mm. and a few others here and there. Oh, no. I mean, Circo seems to be a bit of a disaster. Uh, they had prison... They, they, there was videos of prison fights on YouTube, which means Circo did three things wrong. Uh, they're allowing the fighting to happen. They're allowing the prisoners to have access to phones. And they're allowing the prisoners to have access to the internet. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so privatization for um, healthcare, maybe prison. No. Nope. Actually, um, funny how you say about the whole prison debacle. Um, there's quite a few privatized prisons over in America, right? Yes. They always do worse in private than public prisons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they yeah, always and, do worse. Yeah. yeah in, in regards to recidivism, yes. Recidivism. Um, and health healthcare's worse. Um, prison care, prisoner care is worse. There's no rehabilitation. They're always cutting costs. Yeah. Yeah, because they, cause they want to fill the prisons as much as you can. Yeah. Which means they'll get a lot more revenue, but they want to lessen the expense as much as possible. I'll link you to another podcast about it. It's um, it's called this is criminal. No, no, it's called the criminal podcast. They did something about it as well. So. And um, speaking of stuff that is up to date at the moment, um, are you going to buy the switch? That is releasing today, technically. Samsung Switch? No, 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 the Nintendo Switch. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, I have my laptop and that is fine. <laughs> I, okay, I have to admit I have an Ultrabook, please don't hate on me, but I play quite a lot of games on it, including Assassin's Creed 3, Watch Dogs, and what's the other one? What's the other one, Sophie? I just, oh yeah, I recently played um, the Turing Test. That yes. was really good. But anyway, whatever happened, whatever's happening, I'm not buying the Switch. Yeah. I'm quite happy with what I have right now. And, uh, how about you, Mike? Um, so, what, I'm actually going to have this purchase relatively soon. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that I've been wanting mm-hmm. is actually 20% off for this weekend. Oh, really? Mm. Who's offering that? Um, um, PB Tech. Oh, they're always are having good deals, yeah. right? So, so what it is, it is a wireless Xbox One controller with a wireless dongle. Oh, yeah? So, I can plug a USB into my tablet or my laptop. Yeah? 
and play games with someone wirelessly. Cool. Oh, I thought interesting how you said Xbox One. Yes. I was actually thinking of more like um, it looks it looks more like an anime dog to me. <laughs> and, and speaking of that sort of tech, um, Nokia that used to be owned by Windows, which was a absolute travesty. <laughs> Did you have a look at those Lumina phones? They were horrible. I mean, I I had a few I had a few acquaintances that had them. Uh, they kept on breaking down. You don't have any apps on them. Yeah. And it just looks ugly. Yeah, dead right. Because I know that my mother, uh, my no, actually, it wasn't my mother. It was my sister. Because I I gave her my old Sony Android phone. The next week she brought that phone, and I was just like. Sis, why? 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 Yeah. That was probably the worst decision you could possibly make. And well, was, not, notwithstanding her relationship decisions. Uh, yeah, yeah, but there's neither here or there, but she has a um, S5 now. Oh, good. Mm, but it's not the one that goes boom. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the one that goes bang? Yeah. The, the, the one that goes... Whoosh. So, with Nokia, with their new press conference that they mm. brought out, yeah. they brought out the new... Nokia 6, 8, and 9 phones, yeah, which are different capacities and different screen sizes. Mm-hmm. But the one that everyone's talking about was the rehash of the Nokia 3310, which was one of their huge, massive flagship phones. It was known as the brick phone, if you want to, if you're confused. Yes. Yeah. And for me, I didn't have this phone. Mm-hmm. My sister had this phone. Mm-hmm. Um, because she had a phone before I did. Um, actually, yeah, yeah, that makes more sense. Um, and I, when I went to uni the first time, I actually deliberately went the one above that. Yeah. So it actually had a colour screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was actually rather interesting because technically that brick phone isn't for us, for the developed countries, for the de- it's for the developing countries. Yeah. Because um, right at this moment, um, smartphones are an absolute disaster for them because in order to have a smartphone, you need to have a constant power source, you need to have a constant cellular network, and you need to have the services that can use them. Correct. So what th- this phone offers is a... A 22-hour talk time battery life mm. and a standby battery time of a month. Yeah, it's it's much more reliable. It doesn't The, the screen won't crack on you. And uh, most of the developing countries do have some sort of... Um, they don't have 4G, but they do have texting. And um, maybe I should also link to another podcast. It's called Click by the BBC. Yeah. And they were talking exactly about this. So you can actually do banking via text now in places like um, India and uh, and other developing countries. Yeah. And that is where the Nokia 3310 will absolutely shine. Yeah. It won't break. You don't need that much power in it. And you can still do the things that you need to do with a smartphone on and, it. And I'm sorry to say that I may actually buy this phone. Yeah. A, as a reserve phone. Actually, it's a very, very smart idea because um, if you're ever going to think of it, if you think of emergency phones and emergency situ- situations, the Nokia 3310 is almost perfect. Yeah. It, it's, 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 you know, if it works well in a developing country, it will work extremely well in an emergency situation. So that, that'll, that'll be a wise idea. Might do that. might do the same. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, no doubt when it's when it yeah. is released in New, in New Zealand, it'll probably yeah. be about that... Um... $10 will probably... No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. It'll, it'll be around about that $100 range. $100 range. Okay, yeah. Yeah. It'd be because of converting and trying to make a profit off the... Transport. Yeah, yeah. stuff like that. So, by the way, we were not sponsored by Nokia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we are not sponsored by Nokia, but we are sponsored by things that make us go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> things that make us go, like, ooh. <laughs> and one other thing yeah. that is going to be brought up in a press conference relatively soon, yeah. iPhone 8. Oh, yes. I think it'll be the last one, wouldn't it? No. Well, it's going to be the first one with USB-C. Right. So they're finally joining <laughs> USB-C. I mean, that that was quite, that's actually quite interesting. Do you know why um, Mini USB was created? 
Why is that? We can thank the EU for that. Yay! Yeah, so basically there was this, um, I can't remember the exact details. I might need to do a correction on this. <laughs> Tune in next week to listen to Sophie's corrections. <laughs> um, so basically uh, the EU, um, they were, do you remember uh, when the first, first smartphones were coming out, well the first phones, you had to have 20 different ports Correct. to charge all the phones. The, e- the EU got really sick of that because it was creating huge amounts of e-waste. So they said, well, that's it, guys. You either create, you either create a universal cable or we're going to su- we'll go- we'll basic- or there'll be um, revenge. So what I remember was yeah. with one of the phones, there was three different ports. Yeah. There was the power cord, the data cord, and the head jack. Oh, goodness. Now, now, it's, now it's only one. <laughs> yeah, which is cool. Yeah. And... Yeah. And by all means, I, I think that Bluetooth headphones are amazing. I would love to have Bluetooth headphones, except I will lose them. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know you will. Yeah. <laughs> I know you will. So, um, yeah, well, you can thank the EU for basically merging it from all those different USB, different um, power cords into one mini USB. I mean, it's one of the best things the EU has ever done. You can, yeah. So, no doubt that... Even even the Nokia 3310 mm. would be good for old people. Would you agree? Oh my goodness, yes. I think I think my grandma has something similar. Really? Yeah. Your grandmother has a phone? An old phone? An old phone? Old folks home phone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry to say that my grandmother has <laughs> a touch screen. <laughs> my grandma has one where you press a button and it just loudly shouts out three five <laughs> one <laughs> but, but, message from O two one. but you know you know she's not on facebook thank god and actually um i got a linkedin request from your father i know right <laughs> 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 and I was like, it's like, oh no, 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 <laughs> this I'm has never, happened. I'm never going to work for you, Dad. Yeah, well, yeah, well, that's the whole point. Because the last time I worked, I told him to uh, blatant. <laughs> bl- mm. I used bl- bl- was it blessed for me? <laughs> Adam, <laughs> that's the best way to describe it. Um, but funny enough, it didn't have his photo in it. Oh really? What did it have a photo of? It had the the generic. LinkedIn grey little doop doop doop. Oh, so so the circle, so the decapitated circle above a bump. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, Mike, he once told me I look really Chinese without my glasses on, and I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 oh, that, did, did, did I did I hurt you? Did I hurt you? No, 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 no. You just confused me immensely because that's kind of a strange thing to say to a hundred percent ethnic Chinese person. <laughs> Yeah, Yo, you look really Chinese without your glasses. Like, I am Chinese, though. Would I look less Chinese? Like, I don't get it. I mean, how can I look? How can I not? How can I not look what I am? You look two hundred percent Chinese. I look two hundred percent Chinese. I look really, really Chinese, like stereotypical Chinese afterwards. And I'm like, what? I'm still confused about the statement to this day, which is why I remembered it. Oh, thank you. Thank you for remembering most of the negative things that I've seen. I didn't consider it a negative. I just consider it really confusing. Remember, I, it's very hard for me to get offended. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Should we call it a day? <laughs> oh, please do. I need to go to the art gallery. I need to go for pee. Actually, this is more important. I need to go to Lou now! Please do the outro. <laughs> Sorry. For context, I managed to drop a Mike's suit. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. This is, has been the As Yet Undecided podcast. You you can contact us at asyetundecided at gmail.com or our Twitter handle is AYU Podcast. I am Michael Canara at The Manus on most platforms. I just realised I'm glad I can hold I'm Sophie Knight 709 on most other platforms as well. See you very soon. I'm bursting. <laughs> Yes, she is bursting, and have a good week, guys. Keep out of trouble, why don't you? Just, just keep out of trouble. <laughs>